Thank you to Samuel Wright for your support on Patreon. Hello, everyone. My name is Vivian, and welcome to a, a, a fucking show, I guess. This <laughs> I have not been doing the greatest as of late, and I figured instead of giving a, another fucking update video or something like that, I would talk about it, stuff that's been going on with me and how I'm dealing with it and uh, give give light to some of the positives and just sort of talk candidly for a moment here. Um, the Yeah, the, the first thing, and maybe the only thing, I don't know how long this will go, knowing me way too fucking long, but um, we, uh, if, if you've seen my most recent update video, you know, we lost the house. Um, not fun to deal with. Not none. There, there were like two fun moments during this entire experience. Maybe three. Um, to start at the very beginning of it all, we we'd been looking for a house, uh, pretty much since March of this year, and uh, we we started thinking about it even before that, and and. We're on a two-year lease at our current place, and we've we're we've got a number of gripes with it. Um, but I wouldn't. We are we're satisfied with where we're at for now, but we're obviously trying to find a different place. Um, at this point, uh, I had been out of work for almost a full year. It has been a full year as of this month. I have been able to get away from working when I am not mentally and physically able to. And that has been because of a, a mix of things, but primarily due to the influence and sustainability uh, that has come with uh, Bree's income and her support, uh, both emotionally and just you know in general. It, it's It's been... An absolute fucking blessing. I'm not a religious person, so I always feel weird saying blessing. But, um, you know, I've been told by doctors that if I work, you know, a standard job or or even you know, consider how hard it is for me. I've talked about this a lot, so I'll get off of this. But I'll sh basically they said if I work, then I'll shorten my lifespan, and that that just basically is where we're at. But ever since I've been out of work, I've been able to get Medicaid, uh, food stamps, stuff like that, that have helped uh, soften the blow. I've been on unemployment for a long time. Um, and right now, I am really focusing on my health for the first time. And so that, that's been a really good thing. Held even today, um, I went to the gym and I swam slash water walked for a full mile. Uh, that's 70 lengths of the pool at my gym and shout out to the very, the very sweet Brazilian man who uh, gave me some un unsolicited, but very much welcome encouragement. Uh, it helped motivate me to get to that final 70th length, uh, which was very, very nice and did help. Um, yeah, between uh, exercise, which I wouldn't have that gym membership if it wasn't for Medicaid, uh, because my uh, insurance plan has a free uh, gym membership on it. So that's fucking awesome. Uh, also, that's how I'm paying for my medications. So very, very nice. Um, all this time, we're trying to find a house because... If we're, if I'm being frank, where we're living, like I said, is it, it's livable. Definitely. I, I, the problem is, is that there are a lot of small things that we've managed to find workarounds for. Uh, but, uh, the biggest thing is that lately we've also acquired a fourth member of the household and there's plans for a fifth. Uh, none of these are babies, in case my mother is listening. Uh, <laughs> that, that's years down the line. Uh, 
But what I mean by that is we have me, Bree, and Spoofy, and then uh, Bree's mother moved in. Uh, she's trying to get away from her shitty ex-boyfriend, but uh, that's a whole situation that's personal situation that's that's for her personal life. I don't want to go into that on here, but the point is uh, we had to gut our uh, second bedroom, which we were using as our office, and put everything uh, elsewhere. And our, our house is pretty fucking small, uh, to be perfectly frank. We're, we're working with uh, not a whole lot of space, and where, where Bree is able to set up her office set up kind of in the living room, it is quite in the way. Um, but my recording setup, that happened to coincide with the fact that my back was so fucking bad, I couldn't sit down for a long time. Uh, but fortunately, again, because of Medicaid and because of um, the patience it takes to deal with Medicaid, but eventually the the work that got through it, I'm on a combination of uh, special muscle relaxers and special painkillers that now I'm at a livable, manageable level as long as I don't exacerbate it, take frequent breaks, and there will still be really bad fucking days. Uh, long story short, I can be a homebody without wanting to die because of my back most of the time, kind of. So hopefully that gives any enlightenment as to that situation. But um, with with four people in the house, and I count Spoofy as a person, especially considering we really need to get him a yard that's fenced in. Right now we gotta got kind of got a dog run uh, going, but we don't have a fence between our yard and the neighbor's yard, and Spoofy has broken off of it a couple times because he gets very enthusiastic about socializing. So that that's that's been obnoxious, um, but he's okay. So we've got four people living here, and not a whole lot of space to go around. So we're looking for a place to to move and to escape some of the smaller things about this place that are bothering us. It's infested with spiders, which I I have arachnophobia, so that's just fucking awful. I fucking hate it. Um also there's no central cooling and yeah, I'm we're in Chicago's suburbs, but like <laughs> It it was like 90 something degrees today. Uh so that that was a good time for me to go to the pool. Um which again, thanks to Medicaid, I'm able to do that. Um but even coming back here, we've got the air conditioner going 24/7. It's a wall unit um that our landlord left for us here and he also provided us with a door unit. Well, it's not really a door unit, but it's like a, a air conditioner on wheels where you put uh like it, that's Bree doing dishes in the background. Um, air conditioner on wheels that you put the hose out and you stick it in the window, but the, the, the thing that sticks into the window is broken and the hose mount is broken. Um, and there's not enough room in our bedroom to stick it in the window. So we stick it in the doorway, uh, and vent the, uh, air, the hot air that comes out of the back end of it into the living room. So that's nice. Uh, that totally doesn't get in the way at all we can't even open our bedroom door all the way like we're we're really strapped for space uh that and like the driveway there's a lot of things i could go on for a lot of things but none of these things are like third world country fucking worth complaining about we're we're surviving we're fine it's uncomfortable and inconvenient to a semi-intolerable level but it's far from hardship. I mean, considering our, our previous histories with housing, uh, my my worst living condition was we were infested with all kinds of bugs and snakes and rats and half the floor was missing, had no insulation, no central heating or cooling and uh, mold everywhere. It was fucking filthy and it was just a goddamn nightmare. Um and then Bree's worst housing situation was having no housing situation. Um, so that's that's not good. 
So compared to those things, we're in Shangri-La right now. But uh, compared to, you know, normal life, uh, it's kind of shit. So we're trying to find a new place. And we had reached a, a point where the math was adding up to where a mortgage made more sense than rent. Uh, mortgage, just a housing loan, uh, and then you pay off the loan over time, basically how you would pay rent, but at the end of it, you own the house, you have all the responsibilities of a homeowner in the meantime, um, and then you get to read the benefits of being a homeowner. Um, but with rent, you're paying all that other stuff and hope to fuck that your landlord acts like a homeowner instead of an absentee father. Um, and you're likely paying more in rent than you would on a mortgage and you, there's nothing at the end of that. You just have to hope to Christ that they don't up your rent at some point, which has happened to us so many times, not here, uh, at this specific place, but in other places, it's a fucking nightmare. And so that's lovely. Uh, <laughs> so at the, at this point between what, uh, you know, with, without including unemployment, because that's a finite resource, um, with Bree's income alone, we did the math with our expenditures and income and various, you know, we did the fucking math and came to the conclusion that a mortgage would be more cost effective. So we started looking for houses and we, uh, through a family connection, have a absolutely wonderful realtor, uh, won't give his information but he's he's been working he's been working his ass off trying to find us a place and this isn't even the area he generally works in so every time he comes out to show us a house he's driving like a fucking hour to get here um and his patience is extraordinary it have to be um so that 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 was, he's also the person that helped us find this place that we're at now um and you know he recognized what it was then uh for what it we know it to be now um so he's working with us and through him he also uh i think it's through him we there we've been working with a broker that's been very very helpful and uh we've we've looked at a number of places we've looked at a a good a good number of places at this point just uh between places that our realtor has sent us and uh places that we find ourselves that we want to look at uh, it's, it's been a lot of different places. Some places, uh, we put bids on some places were just kind of shit. And so we didn't put bids on it. Bree's now in the bedroom. What's up, Bree? Uh, there was one place that was a very easy fixer upper, uh, that was, yeah, it was huge. And, uh, we really liked the idea of it. There were drawbacks. Obviously there was like no yard space and. Uh, obviously having to fix up a place to live in, it, it can be kind of hard to juggle living there while fixing it up at the same time. And it had no appliances. So that sucks. But there were, there were different ways we could work around it, but we wound up getting outbid because the housing market right now is stupid. Say you find a place on like realtor.com and what, you see on there, oh, this house looks nice. You look at a couple pictures. It says asking price, um, just to use the number we were dealing with, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's the the asking price for the house that we were uh, trying to get this most recent time, the one that we lost, uh, not the fixer upper one. Uh, that is the asking price, and. At, in this current housing market, what you're more likely to have to put down as a bid is way more than that. I'd say we wound up putting down a bid for $175,000, which was very, very close to the total amount of loan we were approved for from the bank. So that is kind of scary in and of itself. Uh, but the scarier part is that we almost didn't get it with that because there is a lot of people in this housing market that are putting in cash offers. I don't have $175,000. Uh, 
I have never had $175,000. I don't know that I ever will have $175,000. So you have to go to the bank, you get the loan, and it's a whole fucking process. It take it took us almost a month and a half to get from put down the bid to getting rejected or get it to it all falling apart uh to our closing date. <laughs> right right after our closing date was supposed to happen. Fucking hell, it still hurts. But um with a cash offer, that's someone who actually has $175,000 on them and so that means they don't have to go through all that other shit. They don't have to worry about passing a uh a appraisal. They don't have to worry about uh dealing with loan approval. Uh they don't have to deal with the paperwork and all that other stuff. All they have to do is the inspection and the lawyers. And that's basically it. Um and so you're able to get away with a little less, but even with cash offers generally you're going to have to go above the asking price because so many people are buying houses. You put up a house uh, up for listing, and within the fucking hour, there's bids pouring through. The house that we uh, really went through the process on, this most recent one, the one that I got really sad about, um, I found that house. That was not sent to me. That, that I found that house... Within the hour, it was posted on Realtor.com. Within the hour, and it says it on the listing. It posted one hour ago. Found that house, looked through it, discussed it with Bree. We sent it to our Realtor. He scheduled a a time to look at it. And even waiting like a day or two for that listing was risky. Because we were like, someone's going to take it before then. Fortunately. We did not, uh, we were not too late, and our bid did get accepted, not because it was the best bid. Originally, we were told that uh, they liked our bid, uh, which was uh, 170000 It was just 170000 originally. Uh, they liked our bid, and they wanted to work with us so that the current owners could, once they get the money... Uh, stay there while they look for a new place. So cool. Uh, we were totally fine with that. And in exchange for waiting for that, they would not entertain uh, better or higher offers while we were in the process. Because until the paper is signed, literally at any point, they could just accept a different offer and we'd be shit out of luck no matter how much work our broker or lawyer or realtor or the, anything had done. Um, so... We were told that they weren't going to do that, uh, but then they did, and they said, we did get a better offer, so in order to, ke- uh, but they're not as willing to work with us, so if you could up your offer by $5,000, then we'll actually stop doing that, and so it was like, yeah, that fucking sucks, but. Okay, another five thousand. Our our cap was one hundred and eighty thousand. That's how much we had been approved for from the loan. Um, so we do that. We get the agreement. Uh, we actually negotiated in uh some credits to help with closing costs. Uh, and we wanted to get a uh, an appliance warranty type of deal where like if shit went wrong within the first year. They'd have to help us pay for it because obviously within the year it wouldn't be our fault, but they didn't go for that. Instead, they just went with the credit. So our closing costs would be a little bit more manageable. Well, that's fine. Uh, next step after that, uh, well, actually, I kind of got ahead of myself. We went and saw the house. We fell in love with the fucking house. The owners were not there at the time. We didn't get to see every room because one of the rooms had animals in it. So that whatever. But eventually we did get to see it. And there was a picture of it on the website, so it was fine. But we absolutely loved the house. Uh, I recorded a little video while we were there uh, that is not publicly available and is now deleted. There's no copy of it anywhere. Uh, Just so I could show uh, my family and the expected fifth member of our household, which is our friend Courtney, who, once she graduates with her master's degree down in Kansas, is wanting to move up here with us. So great. We're, We're absolutely we love that idea. We love her and we want to make sure that 
uh, we have room for, which is another reason why we're trying to get another house, because right now uh, we're already strapped for space and can barely fit the four people we have now. Again, four people, including Spoopy the dog. Um, so uh, that was our initial walkthrough. And then after we go through the negotiating process, it is the is time for the inspection. Uh, home inspection uh, for first time home buyers. What we were told is because we're first time home buyers, we needed to be there for the inspection. So we go there, and this time the owners are there. Gen At first, they're like hole up in one of the rooms, uh, but after a while, we again we had we had fallen in love with the house, and we love the decoration. Like, the thing is, this is someone's like actual home that I'm discussing. And I have no beef with the owners there. I I I really wanted to buy from them, and uh, we have a lot of similar interests, both in in professional and scientific and entertainment. I'm a I'm a lifelong fan of Homestar Runner, and they had a piece of Homestar Runner merchandise that's only been available within the last year. They had that. And I was able to see it, and I saw a bunch of other nerdy stuff. They had a bunch of cool video game consoles. They had a cool setup for it. Um, they were also into specific fields of study that we also like. And, and once they came out and talked to us, we had just hit it off really well. We all seemed to really get along. It was fucking awesome. <sighs> God, it really fucking pains me that we don't... Like, we don't even have their contact information, so we can't even, like, explain to them what happened. Because as fucking much as it sucks to try to buy a house, selling one and then having to buy another one is probably worse. So, by default, it has to be worse. So, they 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 rode with us for a while. I'm willing to bet that extra 5000 thing was something that a lawyer or some other realtor or someone pulled, but... Uh, then again, maybe they just made a really good first impression. I don't know. I can't speak to that, and I don't want to because again, this is real. These are real people uh, that I don't really know, but that are going through some real home buying difficulties. So I see them more as compatriots more than combatants. But any fucking way, uh, after the inspection, we find out there's a a, a couple of things that need to be addressed. Uh, we try to negotiate about it. Uh, doesn't really work out, but nothing was too extreme. There's like one kind of extreme thing that again, real person's house, not going to discuss it on fucking line without permission. So anyway, moving on from that, the next step would, uh, is the appraisal. Oh my God. Oh, for, for the record, the inspection cost 400 fucking dollars. The appraisal cost 400 fucking dollars. We don't get that money back because their services were rendered. They inspected, they appraised. So even we're eventually hope we're supposed to be getting our down payment back, uh, which is good because <laughs> spoiler alert, no one in this house is employed right now. Um, so that two thousand dollars will be much much appreciated. Um, but the appraisal took a long fucking time way longer than was expected to and the person who was uh trying to negotiate the stuff on top of the appraisal was taking a long time and at this point we had been waiting a like a month and a week or two and around this time when we're waiting for the appraisal we're waiting for the final paperwork we're waiting to see it all go the appraisal cost already had gone Re gets fired. And as discussed vehemently in that most recent update video, for absolute bullshit reasons. And she even went into some description in the comments. Uh, she got uh, like three write ups. One was for not putting in notes on her files, which even they had discovered was due to uh, a systems error that Bree and the tech person had to figure out because the supervisors weren't doing shit to help. They were just blaming Bree for not doing something she was doing. 
Um, second was due to a upper management saying that the the company wasn't making goals, so everyone got a write up, whether or not they did good or not, which Brie was doing fucking great. So that sucked. Um, and then the last one was attendance over days that were not mandatory. And there you go. You got your three write-ups. So, yeah, attended specifically in the office while everyone's working from home. So what the fuck? So, yeah, it's... Is there more bad news? No, okay. Oh, good, good. Um, But yeah, so she got fired, and it... It, it fucking... It sucked so bad. Because... This is a weird compliment that I'm about to give you, Bree. When you cry your eyes out, your eyes are so pretty. I know. <laughs> you get all out. So yeah, it's it's such a weird compliment to give someone, but yeah, yeah, it. And I wanted to say so at the time, but I was like, "That's not. That was not the time for it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So at that point, we were we tried to get Brie on unemployment, but they they denied her because of the bullshit fire conditions. So she not only got fired for shit she didn't do, she got denied unemployment benefits for that same shit, and then because she got fired, the uh and the appraisal going too long. They had to do an employment verification, came out to find that she was not employed, so the bank backed out of their loan, and then we lost the house. So because of these motherfuckers that run that goddamn place, deciding that after gaslighting Bree and saying that they were absolutely behind her and they knew she was trying to buy a house and they knew she was struggling with depression and they knew... All the shit that we were trying to do and that she was working her goddamn ass off, they still fucking screwed her and we lost potentially thousands of dollars, definitely hundreds of thousands of dollars of home uh uh home cost and home uh home fucking property value, thank you. Uh, now we're also stuck going through yet another hot ass summer in this house with no central cooling. At this point, if there was any way that we could prove that you had not that you had done the notes and that you that all this other stuff, if there was a way we could prove it in a court of law, it's possible that we could have sued these people for upwards of a million fucking dollars. Knowing lawsuits probably more for whatever fucking reason, but. Exactly. They 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 quarantined the evidence and then wiped it themselves. They didn't even let her log out of her shit or get anything on, on there. Uh they just <sighs> motherfuckers. And god damn it, I want to fucking say they're who they are publicly, but I'm not going to because then we could get fucking sued. Wouldn't that be the goddamn kicker? But they were motherfuckers and they hurt us really fucking bad. And you really fucking bad because it's taken you like a month to recover from this. But in positive news, you have recovered. You're applying to other places. Your confidence seems to be up. You're working out. Um, and we're working on an appeal for unemployment. So hopefully that gets worked out. Um, what we're currently planning on doing is uh, once you can get another job, you definitely get more money than what you were getting before. You know, it would be a very worst case scenario that you actually wind up with a pay cut. But if you, once you get employed, uh, then we're going to wait until you're, <laughs> we're actually getting paid again. Then we're going to repay off the credit cards because we were depression eating like a motherfucker. Like every other day, sometimes two days in a row, we were getting Grubhub, and when we Grubhub, we don't we don't Grubhub soft. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. It is a total ripoff. But fuck, are you gonna go outside and get it when you can't mentally leave the house? It's predatory. It's straight up predatory. 
because of that, uh, our credit took a bit of a hit. Um, but we don't have to do too much recovery for it because our we hadn't been working on our credit super hard beforehand, and we still got a pretty good loan. So if you get a pay increase and we have good credit going into it, we could definitely get a better house than the one that we were going to get. And this house that we were going to get was a, a two-level house, a wildlife certification backyard with garden plants, uh, like garden plots for it already. Um, it didn't have a garage. Uh, it was like one and a half bath. That's That half bath was a joke. Like, the toilet wasn't sealed all the way. There was no ceiling. And they had put up, like, fucking mirror wall in a tiny-ass bathroom. So it looks like you're shitting directly next to you. It was fucking weird. Also, laundry's downstairs, which is just a pet peeve. We had made the the admittedly kind of foolhardy plans. And I... I, I in the video I made, I kind of overstated it saying that's what i get for getting my heart set on something the the real sentiment is that's what i get for planning on something that could easily be taken away before it's, i counted my chickens before they hatched essentially is the the phrase um and so i we had gone through and planned different rooms and different ideas for them and we held off for a long time, but eventually, when you're waiting two months for you to make the biggest purchase of your life, it kind of gets to you after a while. So, yeah, we were past the finish line because we were supposed to close on May 28th, and it the because the appraisal took so fucking long, um, I wish we could get our money back because at that point it was bullshit, but. Uh, they pushed it back like a week or two, and then within that week or two, they found out about the firing. And so it was just absolute bullshit. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Making bad content. Oof. So what we're doing now, going to get Bree a new job. She's been applying to places left, right, and center all over the place. Stuff that makes sense, stuff that doesn't make sense. Because you never know what the fuck you're going to get. Yeah, shoot for the stars and maybe you'll blow up the moon and make Dwight D. Eisenhower happy. Um, or 60k a year, that would be nice. Um, So, because before you were working at 35,000 and they promised you within three months you would go up to, what, 38,000? And then they never did it. And you were there for a year. Within a week of you getting fired, you were emailing people about the raise that they promised you like a fucking million years ago when you started. And I'm writing it on my hand. <laughs> um, you're emailing. Yeah, you're emailing. And then all of a sudden, oh, what? Like, oh, you just haven't been doing your stuff when literally they were also at the same time telling you that you were the most productive person they had. They these they were fucking lying to you. They were treating you like shit from the beginning. Which sucks because they really had a convincing act for a while. But that's what I was telling Mark. I was like, I almost feel like maybe they fired me so they could bring in a new person that isn't trained and pay them way less. Mm hmm I have no proof of that, but like It's very likely. It it makes it makes corporate bullshit world sense. That they would do that. So yeah, it, it it you got screwed big time. We all got screwed because they screwed us. Um I I, I might I think we can send an email to Stephen P. New, that's the official cult of cornet lawyer who uh has made super big court cases. I think there's a free email option. Send him the situation, see if we can do anything, but we don't have any of the fucking emails or proof that anything state. We have testimony, but that's not enough. But anyway, um, so that's what ha what happened with the house, and there's a, there were a few other things that were slightly bothersome. 
Uh, it said that there were four bedrooms, but one of them was tiny, and the other one was a former garage. Um, there, uh, like I said, the laundry was on a different level than all the bedrooms, other than one. Um, the kitchen was weird. The oven was super old, and they had countertop burners, but they weren't on the oven. It's it it's super weird. When I showed that picture to, I think I showed that uh to dine uh he said he he fucking he hates uh countertop was it counter i whatever but yeah uh, even people outside of the circle were like what the fuck ew it was also on a major road which i was not looking forward to trying to get in and out of that um but at at some point I do wonder, and I'm thinking about it now, at some point, we had been trying to find a house for so long that when we started to find places that were objectively not great, we started to react like they were the fucking best thing in the world. Because we got fucking tired of seeing, look, going to look at places. Like the, 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 the fixer-upper place. No appliances. Fixer upper, no fucking yard, have to share half the yard with the fucking city because of the poor city planning. Um, but yeah, 420 on some street and it had some things we did like, and we were like, we love this house. We want it. It was and like, it's fucking weird after, after having to go through the grind of, Will this be the place? Will this be the place? Oh, this is not good, or oh, we got outbid on this place, or all these other things. This latest house, I I fell in love with. And I mean that, like, literally. When I found out we weren't getting the house, I felt true heartbreak. Um, multiple times. Like, every time I thought of another thing that wasn't going to happen. But then, like, later that night, we started talking about, like, I didn't, I wasn't looking forward to this part, and this part kind of sucked. And and you start to like look at it objectively, and I'm realizing that it was kind of like double action because not only had we been seeing so many places that this place looked amazing, but also we had been waiting two months and building it up on our heads all these plans so that now it had become something way more than it was in our heads. You know what I mean? So, like, we had just, yeah, it, it, we got too mental about it, and hopefully on our next go-around it'll be better. Fortunately, uh, our landlord is also a realtor. So, if he has a place that we can figure something out, we'll see. But, um, don't want to, we don't want to leave our current realtor, but, like, I mean, if our if, if we get a fucking kick ass offer, or we find a kick ass opportunity, rather, it would be silly of us to not take it. Yeah, so we we told our landlord what we're looking for, so we'll we'll see what happens. But with that, that means that hopefully, since he potentially has the opportunity to make a bunch of money if we go at that place, he'll be willing to work with us in case this goes a little while. That, and it turns out, Courtney isn't gonna be up here until, like, April of next year anyway, yeah. so she's in no big rush, because that's ten months from now-ish. Yeah, that's ten months from now. That's the, the big situation. Long-form detail. Now, how are we feeling? I, I'm, I, I've moved into acceptance, I think. Um... Every once in a while, I'll think back on it, and I'm like, man, like even like you said, it's it doesn't feel quite real yet. You know, you'd like, oh, I can't wait to move this into the office. Oh, hey, fuck, we don't, we're not getting one. Like every minute of every day for two months, constantly checking the email, constantly checking messages, sleeping with the ringer on just in case our fucking broker calls us. Like it, it's fucking ridiculous what this process does to you. I remember your stepmom was talking about when uh, she was going through the home buying process for their house that they bought a couple years ago. And she said that, like, she was crying 
and shit. Like, and when we started this whole thing, we were like, <sighs> like we were sympathetic. We weren't scoffing in her face, but like, that's not going to happen to us. We're fine. We're not, because with them, they were getting kicked out of their place. For us, we're not getting kicked out of here. Our lease is up in December and we can still work with our landlord on it. He's been, he's, he has a good relationship with us. We're we're fine. But no, we cried a lot. We we and we're going to continue because we didn't get the house. So we're going to go through this all again once you have a job and once uh we pay off the credit cards within what 30%? Yeah, it, it, according to preferably. hopefully, yeah, preferably, yeah, but according to what Credit Karma they say that uh, you know, under 30% utilization on a credit card, and that's fine. We're doing okay for now. The the job search continues. Uh we're and then you start school in August. So that's in Oh, so you basically got 3 months. So yeah, you got a long time. We're definitely going to run out of money before then if you don't get a job. So the clock's ticking, I say, as the... Yeah, I was going to say, clock's ticking as the fucker who's been unemployed for over a year. But Yeah, you're doing you're doing so well. I don't even want to joke about it. You're doing so well getting your applications in. I'm not just saying because there's a microphone in my face and I'm trying to look good for the internet. But no, seriously, you have been busting your ass and fighting through a lot. This has been a very emotional time for both of us but you're the one that actually had to deal with the process of being fired and knowing that you know because of that firing we don't have the house and i have maintained since that day and still do you did not get fired because of anything you fucking did wrong they fucked up they screwed us they screwed us they screwed you and it's their fucking loss and i've said this all before so i ain't gonna fucking bend your ear on it anymore but um so that that's basically all i wanted to record today uh i'm trying i want to try to get all of the above back under the two hour mark um because that that just fucking is way too long even for me um and hopefully if i have multiple topics to talk about it'll encourage me to record these more often because so many people love these. <laughs> so many people listen to my podcast that it's, it's man, it's humbling the two or three of you that <laughs> click on it and then click away after 30 seconds. You, yeah. <laughs> fucking the fingers. Oh, hell. Anyway, if you have made it to this part, of the podcast let me know by uh let me do down in the comments uh what should the question be this time around i got one i was watching a video about late night tv uh who is your favorite late night show host uh i grew up on letterman i like conan but i've like never actually seen him do his thing if you zoom out uh, from the the Eddie Burback qualifications, I guess John Oliver, uh, because he's in there. Um, Bree is leaving before I can get her answer. Who's your favorite late night host? Conan and John Oliver. Okay, so there you go. I would say your your yours is probably more leaning toward John Oliver because you actually watch his shit all the time. That is true. I I don't know if we. I'm not good at catching TV as it happens, but if we could watch whole episodes, apparently we're going to be able to soon because uh, uh, apparently Conan is quitting his show on TBS and is moving to doing a show on HBO Max. Yeah. So that's cool. I bet John Oliver's thrilled about that. Uh, hopefully John... Here he comes. Conan's taking off that show. Huh? Yeah. John Oliver's <laughs> going to be... Yeah, George uh, John Oliver's going to be the new, new George Lopez is what I was trying to say. But yeah, so Bria's left the room. I need to go to the bathroom. So thank you all very much for listening. Let us know down in the comments who's your favorite t late night TV show host. And of course, any thoughts you have about the situation that I have just spent an hour 
telling you about. It fucking sucked happening, and I feel like now I've I've learned some important lessons on kind of my chickens before they hatch and uh, expectations. So hopefully, if this happens again, which it very well might, uh, not exact circumstances, but if we get our hearts set on a house and then not get it, that type of thing. Um, hopefully it'll be easier next time, and hopefully I will uh, take better care of myself mentally uh, going into that situation so I don't have to feel as bad as I have been. Um, so thank you all very much for listening. Uh, answer the question, who's your favorite late night show host, in the comments. Uh, thank you all very much for putting up with the decrease in videos as of late. Uh, my mental health and energy has been all fucking over the map. Um, but hopefully things will be better going forward. I have been the Train Unprofessional. Have yourself a merry fucking day. Be kind. Be safe. Be well. Bye, everyone!